Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm here today with Pete McGinnis, Grammy-nominated composer, arranger, and award-winning jazz vocalist. Pete was a longtime New York City-based trombonist and is currently Associate Professor of Jazz Studies and Arranging at William Patterson University. Pete is here to talk to us about how to take a compositional approach to arranging. Well, hello, and uh, thanks, Dan, for having me on this great new forum for jazz composers. It's really an amazing thing. We're going to talk about how to arrange uh, a piece with the mindset of a composer. And the song I've chosen for this uh, exercise, if you will, is the old Stephen Foster composition, Beautiful Dreamer. The first thing I think that a composer uh, who arranges uh, wants to do, uh, the first thing you want to do is really digest the song. You want to... Um, know the original style, the context, its rhythmic structure, its phrase structure, any important uh, melodic events or intervallic events that are stand out as important for drama. Once you've digested all that and really owned the song, you can start to mess with things. And so for my arrangement of Beautiful Dreamer, the first and foremost thing I wanted to do was change the context. So I turned what originally was in a slow, smooth moving waltz into a fast, energetic samba. And I found that was going to have some challenges. I could hear it was going to work, but I had to do some work on the melody to make it rhythmically and style, style, stylistically work better. Okay, you'll notice right here that the melody is in three bar phrases and is in three, four time. Whereas my four, four, fast four samba is in four bar phrases, and um, which would be funny for the length of the melody. So what I tried to do is stretch the melody out, those first three or four notes, it made you feel like it was the same amount of space that those notes were happening in, in terms of activity. And at the same time, I, I was able to create a kind of a hemiola syncopated figure with the dotted quarter notes, which I felt really worked well for samba feel. So what was dee do do dee do is now this, dee do dee do dee uh, uh, four. And I felt that worked really well and covered a couple of bases while we were doing that. Now that I've got that figured out, um, now I can use this rhythmic structure as a motif or a compositional element for other aspects of the arranging. Not just presenting the melody itself, but also things like background material, developmental sections, uh, introductions, endings, uh, other parts that happen in the arrangement. Even the bass lines and some drum figures will be derivative of this rhythmic cell that I've created compositionally. So let's see how this works out on the score. And this will be a score reduction of the first two A sections of the melody, letter A, if you will, after the introduction, and uh, follow along to see uh, how much of what I'm talking about is happening. I'm just kind of easing you into it. More of this happens, much more happens uh, more densely later in the arrangement. So let's play the audio. just really beginning. You can hear little bits of it. I'm not trying too hard yet, but just trying to get the idea, especially with the counter melodies and some of the things happening in the bass line, that this reference to that compositional cell that I've created with my reworking of the melodies is taking shape. And it, it really develops over the course of the entire, the entire arrangement. One more thing I did with this song is I looked at the intervallic structure of the, of the melody. Uh, just simply as a series of intervals. Now we're not talking about rhythm, we're talking about pitch right now and interval. So if we just look at this for a second and I analyze the actual original melody, which is at the top here. That's the first series of intervals of the song. It, you notice it's a step down and a step up, a fourth down and a third down. And I call that a step, not a half step, even though it is right now, because as I rework this intervallic structure, I may change that to a whole step. I may go up, I may go down, but I want to keep this idea. Always returning, because that to me is part of the nature of the song. I don't want to go so far afield from the song 
that you don't see the relationship. So again, and then after that, I started creating a series. This is basically for the introduction of the song. Uh, introduction of other uh, variations, permutations of these intervals. So what you see here, and the next utterances, now I'm already implying harmony. I'm already implying like a G sus flat nine. And then so we have this. Original, next entrance, and a, a kind of a dark chord is attached to that note. Next phrase, this is just phrase segment. Another phrase segment based on the original. Going up, up, up. Okay, that's the second phrase. And these all happen in funny places rhythmically. Next phrase. And then up. And then I want some nasty chords here. Now to really seal the deal about that step thing, I, I have the whole band playing. And I do it again. It's to really say I'm messing with the intervals. Uh, and then the last utterance of the melody you're going to hear is trombones. And then we get into the song itself. So this is kind of a fantasy on the interval, this introduction. Just in kind of in winding up now, uh, I, as a compositional arranger, or arranger who uses compositional techniques, uh, connecting directly to the song I'm working with creates a whole new way of thinking. If you're always tethered to something about the song you're arranging, but you find ways to mess with it and juggle things around, you are acting like a composer while you're arranging. This song was, uh, this arrangement was recorded by my jazz orchestra, the Pete McGinnis Jazz Orchestra. Uh, several years ago, and it's on the album called Strength in Numbers on the Summit Record label. Dan, thank you very, very much. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full length events and participate in live Q and A's with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.